This means we are back back for the Transport and Climate Change Week 2021. It's a pleasure to have you on board. So a warm welcome to all of you wherever you are joining us today and tonight wherever you are dialing in from which time zone. A warm welcome to all of you and welcome to the Transport and Climate Change Week 2021. It is a pleasure to have you on board in its fourth edition of the Transport and Climate Change Week 2021 organized by the GIZ on behalf of the Federal Ministry of the Envir Environment, Nature, Conservation and nuclear safety. And of course, we are not just debating here from our global hub in Berlin. No, we are debating with you wherever you are joining us with the world as we are live streaming in different time zones. 13 different time zones are on board. So welcome to a global audience and nice to have you with us today. My name is Katie Gallos, I'm a geographer, and I'm very pleased to be your moderator for today and to accompany you throughout the day. And of course, this afternoon session is really dedicated to the time zone a little bit west from the Central European time. So buenos dias and buenos dias to Latin America. A warm welcome to our audience in Latin America, especially uh, in the Western Hemisphere. So thanks for joining us, of course. We did have a great session already this morning focusing more on the regional perspectives and frameworks uh, focusing on Central Asia and India, and now we are looking in depth in a conversation um, with Latin American perspectives. Of course, this is a very special platform and we would have loved to have you on board and to see you all in a live conference. You know, we all miss these face-to-face -face conversations and the face-to-face -face gatherings, but we do live in these times of a global pandemic of COVID-19. And that's why we set up this great virtual conference with a very special digital platform. Feel free to hang around, to be engaged in the chats, to ask your questions, to post your ideas, your quotes, your thoughts, and of course, your mottos and statements. And of course, don't miss, and this is a tip from myself, from the moderator, the matchmaking area, as this is really a special tool to get connected through the digital space, you know, tag yourself with the keywords that are important to you. And then there will be an algorithm focusing on the matchmaking to find a good debating partner, a good discussion partner for you. And of course, to get connected in your favorite topic. Matchmaking area number one. And of course, just as a reminder, in case you have any technical issues, technical questions, technical problems, problems, don't hesitate to also ask your questions in the chat. A whole team uh, watches you and of course is watching your back and holds your back in case of any problems and technical difficulties. And last but not least, of course, we do have a virtual fair on the platform. So all the participating organizations are uh, able to be reached out through that virtual fair. You know, you can exchange your business cards, you can exchange your contact details, and of course, you can already start debating and discussing. I think this is a brilliant idea to really come together as a transport community and as a family to debate about the transport and climate change week's topics of today. We've already had a very exciting morning um, debating with a lot of high-level guests from different parts of the world about how to rethink on transport policies in these times of recovery. Green recovery was the key word of this morning. And uh, I was very excited to read all your posts with the hashtag Transport Week 21 and, of course, the hashtag We Change Transport. So thank you very much for being engaged also in the social media, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, Facebook and on Twitter, please continue to share your thoughts, your ideas, your statements, your links, and of course, your, yes, your ideas, what you'd like to focus on, what are your priorities, let us know what you think, also on the wall of ideas, so there are plenty of op opportunities to be engaged and to stay, to stay in a communication, to stay engaged with each other, and to talk with each other, and not just about each other. So I think this is, this is the chance and the opportunity, especially in this week, dedicated to transport and climate change. As a welcome word and as a welcoming remarks, I'd like to give the floor now to the Federal Minister for Environment, Nature, Conservation, and Nuclear Safety from Germany, Svenja Schulze, is with us. Participants, ministerial representatives, colleagues, welcome to the fourth Transport and Climate Change Week. 
In years past, you met here in Berlin to work together in solutions for transforming the transport sector. Transport Week has become an established platform promoting international exchange. Learning from each other is important because the global climate crisis can only be resolved cooperatively as an international community together with all stakeholders. The transformation of the transport sector is vital in this context. Today, transport is responsible for a quarter of the global energy-related greenhouse gas emissions. In 40% of countries around the world, transport is the, the sector with the highest energy consumption. In the majority of the remaining countries, transport ranks second. And this is why swift decarbonization of the transport sector is crucial for achieving international climate targets. With the Climate Change Act, the German government set binding emission reduction targets for each economic sector in 2019 for energy, buildings, agriculture, and also for transport. We have just made these targets more stringent also for the transport sector. Our constitutional court has issued a landmark ruling on this matter. Numerous measures have been set in motion for, to transform the transport sector in a climate-friendly way. For example, the German government supports electric mobility with incentive systems, including an environmental bonus. We support the purchase of electric buses for local public transport. We also support the production and use of sustainable electricity-based fuel for aviation and shipping. Under the International Climate Initiative, the Environment Ministry funds transport-related projects in other regions with around 60 million euros annually. For example, in Colombia, a project with the local government improved the framework conditions for using e-buses and local public transport. Our partners in Thailand are setting up a clean mobility program by introducing a city toll system and the National Fund for Sustainable Transport. One part of the program is the electrification of public transport. This improves air quality. Local particulate matter emissions will be reduced by up to 36% per year. Last year, in Germany and worldwide, recovery package were put together to help people and the economy during the coronavirus crisis. Happily, many of these programs have a future-proof, climate-friendly and sustainable recovery for the economy and society at their foundations. This window of opportunity should also be used for transforming transport. The tagline of this year, Transport and Climate Change Week, smart and green recovery in the transport sector, is directly linked to the recovery. I hope you all gain fresh inspiration here for your work together Let's continue the dialogue. Thank you, dear minister. And now we're heading straight into our next welcome words. Tanya Gunner is with us, chair of management board of GIZ. Good morning, Ms. Gallen. Good, Good morning. morning. I hope you are well wherever you are joining us today. So thanks again for joining the Transport Week uh, today. And of course, there are more than uh, yeah, 1,000 participants. I just got the numbers, more than 1,000 participants listening right now. From your perspective, what would you like to tell our guests? Well, thank you so much. And it's uh, great to hear this huge number of participants. Um, uh, I'm very happy uh, to hear uh, that. And I would like uh, to start, um, uh, dear uh, Ms. Gallus, dear Mr. Bonga, dear partners and colleagues, dear Ms. Schulze, uh, dear participants. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all today to the fourth edition of the Transport and Climate Change Week in Berlin, this time virtually. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, this, the event had to be hybrid. But I must admit that I would much rather welcome you all in uh, Berlin in person. On the other hand, I'm excited to experience this conference in this new innovative format where we are all digitally connected across 20 countries around the world. We are grateful that the Ministry of Environment is funding this week full of trainings and workshops. The support through the International Climate Initiative for Transport is, is encouraging. 
I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizational team for all their efforts uh, to make this event possible and you, dear participants, for your understanding and support. And we have a lot of partners on board, like, for example, the Umweltbundesamt, where we later hear President Dirk Messner giving the keynote speech. Without these partner organizations and their tremendous efforts, the event would not be possible. For the next few days, I wish you a successful event with plenty of inspirational discussions, fruitful exchange and instructive workshops. I hope you can take a lot away. To kick off the event today, we have a very interesting and enlightening program ahead to, of us, and I'm excited to be a part of it. So I'll stop here and um, hand back uh, virtual, uh, the virtual microphone to you, Ms. Gallus. Thank you, Ms. Gunnar. So let's get a little bit more personal. I mean, from a scale from one, not very much, to 10, very much, how much do you miss personally attending live events in these times? Well, not easy to answer uh, that question. Um, um, as I mentioned before, I would, of course, prefer to welcome and ta ta talk to all of you uh, in person. The last um, year has been full of video conferences and online meetings. It is just not the same to communicate with people uh, via MS Teams. But on the other hand, we learned a lot about how to use it. Um, and we can acknowledge that these virtual formats often uh, offer a way to host international conferences of this magnitude without pouring vast amounts of CO2 emissions into the atmosphere from our flights around the globe. And to be honest, much more people could participate than being in person in, uh, in in Berlin and saying both. So I'm between six and eight. Um, normally, I like to be with the people in person, but I see the, um, the, the also the great opportunities that virtual formats have for participation. It's much more inclusive, and because of this, it's uh, in between. Uh, as I mentioned, between six and eight, I will I I, I will say I, I would have like in person, but it's fine for me in that way. If uh, much more people can participate. Ms. Gunnar, you are now chair of the management board at the GSZ. When we look back into your CV 10 years ago, you have been the Minister uh, for Environment and Transport of the German federal state Baden-Württemberg. So greetings go out to the southern state Baden-Württemberg. When you compare now the policy making from today to back then, would you say climate is more of a priority within the transport policies now than it used to be 10 years ago? And of course, even the question was climate even put into consideration 10 years ago? Well, um, also not, not so easy. I think um, the transport sector has a long tradition of actions that focus on environmental uh, improvement. Uh, the focus used to be more on local problems like ur uh, urban air pollution or traffic noise. These were driving forces. For much more than a decade, we know that solutions are, for example, cleaner fuels or, uh, and vehicles, public transport, walking and cycling, and the reduction of transport uh, demand. On the other side, um, it was quite interesting um, bringing both ministries together 10 years ago, and it was before I, um, uh, um, uh, before 2005, it was the same in Baden-Württemberg. It was clear that there were some things you have to think together in environment and transport. And yes, there were. Um, uh, we discussed a lot at that time. We discussed um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, for ourselves about the transport sector as an important sector for CO2 emissions, uh, be it um, uh, on, on, on flight, car, flight or cars issues. We discussed at that time about hydrogen too. We discussed about e-vehicles, but we were not 
as far in the technician uh, in the techniques as we are now so that their things have changed and now the need to reduce co2 has become a much stronger policy driver also for the transport sector it has gained greater significance in the decision making of our transport policy makers this has to do with an increased political pressure from society and um, with the fact that germany's climate targets are getting more ambitious we have the new narrative now called the Verkehrswende, which basically implies a great transformation of transport systems towards zero carb uh, uh, carbon. In addition, I would say that the digitization offers the transport sector opportunities to become more efficient that simply weren't available 10 years ago. For example, traveling multimodal has become so much easier with smartphone uh, apps, electric vehicles vehicles were a distant possibility, but not something you would ever seen on German roads. So new technologies have rapidly expanded our toolbox of sustainable transport and policy uh, actions. We discussed 10 years ago, we discussed about the new technologies, but we were not able to, um, uh, they were not, they weren't at the large scale as they are now. Um, so this is, I think, a little bit the, the, the difference between uh, 10 years ago and now. And last but not least, I observed that the freight transport sector is finally getting into the radar uh, of climate policy. This is good because the footprint of this trans uh, transport subsector has been overlooked for too long. Thank you so much for actually explaining a little bit the, the journey, of course, that is also held within within um, the scene from debating and discussing really coming into action. Now, Ms. Gunner, as a chairperson of an international active development organization, of course, working together with very different local partners across the globe, across the world, in different regions, but of course in different perspectives and in different contexts, where do you see the role of transport and climate change? Where will it be playing? A, a bigger international role within the international cooperation. And of course, can we hope that the GSZ is also shifting a priority towards that topic of coming together the transport and the climate change? I know we do have to tackle a lot of different topics right now concerning the pandemic times with global health and so on. But where do you see the focus and the priority of the topic of today and of course of our week, transport and climate change within the international and the German development cooperation? Well, I think not only for us in Germany, but also for the partner countries uh, of German development cooperation, climate change is a key issue. With the Paris uh, Agreement, we all need to transition to emission neutral and climate friendly development in many sectors. That is why Germany has made climate change mitigation and adaptation a priority area of its development uh, cooperation. From our cooperation with partners around the world, we understand that development and transport are closely linked. Sound transport infrastructure and efficient, affordable mobility services are key drivers for economic prosperity, for job creation and inclusive growth. Seamless transport options across borders are a prerequisite for effective international cooperation, but also for intercultural dialogue. Despite digital technologies, intercultural exchange works best when you can physically, we had it uh, before, travel to other countries from time to time by plane, ship, train, um, by plane, ship, train or car. And um, we missed this during the pandemic. So we see how, how much we need that. As a sustainable solution, we need to work towards building transport systems that support economic growth and international cooperation, but at the same time do not cause further harm to our planet. For us as GIZ, climate change is a top priority. In our view, the transport sector is one of the most important sectors to tackle this challenge, especially because it can and should play a fundamental role 
in reducing emission. It is rapidly growing with ever increase uh, greenhouse gas emission in comparison with other sectors, many of which are witnessed a, either a decrease or stabilization in emissions level. For the reason, for that reason, at GIZ, we have stepped up our portfolio of climate and sustainability focused transport projects. As of now, we are active in more than 30 countries on behalf of the German Federal Environment Ministry, the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation, the European Commission and other donors uh, implementing transport projects that work towards a greener for, uh, a future. Um, I am optimistic that even more projects will follow the push, push for a Verkehrswende, as I mentioned before, that means transport transition is growing here in Germany, fueled by the need for a green recovery. Uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic. I am sure that we can take a pioneer role here, encouraging our partners uh, around the world to uh, set similar uh, priorities. And I think the key factor is a uh, green recovery after COVID-19 pandemic. It is in the European Union, it is in Germany, and I think it's also key for our partner countries. The coronavirus pandemic will have an ongoing influence on the future and priorities of our transport projects. In Germany, the strength um, uh, of um, our transport and lo logistic sector served as a reminder of the huge importance uh, of uh, robust infrastructure throughout the pandemic and ongoing. Our logistics sector has ensured the transport and trade of medical goods and service, food and other vital resources. As a result, I think logistics, trade and cooperation will play an increasing role in for the transport um, uh, um, the projects of GIZ. To summarize, I crucial um, uh, it is crucial that we join forces on a global level to address um, challenges in transport, particularly in sectors such as aviation and freight, which have a huge uh, impact on all of us. We are here today to find out more about the measures uh, other countries are putting in place to ensure sustainable and robust infrastructure development, particularly as we move towards to recovery from the pandemic. Thank you, Tanya Gerner, for these outlines and, of course, for the importance of also connecting the dots within a portfolio that has this impact as it has um, from the GI set. So thanks again for these outlines. Last question, Ms. Gerner. When you look ahead five days, I mean, we just started our transport week, transport and climate change week, but looking ahead on, on to Friday, what is your expectation? What would be a good result that you would like to see, of course, and to hear about? Well, for me, uh, a successful result would be to have all the participants leaving the conference full of new insights, knowledge, inspiring ideas and visions speak, uh, sparked by exchange with exports from all over the world have different perspectives because it was very fruitful. If people take new knowledge or ideas away from the Transport Week, I think that would make uh, it a success. This is the first step to come up with new innovative sustainable transport uh, projects and approaches for increasing the effectiveness um, um, uh, of our work and our impact. It is a chance to strengthen our cooperation as a transport community, the collectively fighting for a transformative mobility solution. Furthermore, I hope that we will also be able to reach people who are new to the transport sector and might not be yet be familiar with the huge potential it offers in the intersection with climate change. But after that week, they feel fine in the community and they feel well informed and um, um, uh, are very happy to be part of this community. Absolutely, I agree. And everybody, new, every newbie is very welcome in the transport family. So thank you very much, Tanya Gunner, for your outlines. Thank you for joining us, the Chair of Management Board of the GIZ, and greetings to you. Thank you. And we are continuing with an outlook of the program, ladies and gentlemen. So again, it's a pleasure to have you on board here on the Global Hub in Berlin. Thanks for joining us. And with me in the studio now is Daniel Bunga, the Program Director, Transport and Climate Change. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and it's a big pleasure for me to uh, welcome you all today. I'm your host and uh, it's uh, great. I would love to have you here in Berlin. And uh, so I think it would be nice if uh, more than 1,000 people who registered for Transport Week would be actually here and we would sit in a huge uh, town hall. But unfortunately, the last year was very different. Uh, and still, we have put together a great program for you. So uh, there are more than 20 countries participating. And this morning, we already saw uh, quite a number of colleagues from Asia joining. And now Latin America, some African countries, European countries are tuned in. That's great. In total, we have more than 60 sessions in the uh, week. And uh, so we have more than 200 speakers that actually uh, bring this all together. As you see here, we have five days full of knowledge. And uh, we start today with a conference day to give you an impression and to onboard you uh, on the most recent discussions. And then we have three uh, days uh, full of workshops. On the first day, we talk on how to avoid uh, travel needs. Second day, how to shift to uh, the more environmental friendly modes. And the third day, we look on the technology side on improve and fuels, electric mobility, and these type of topics. And uh, so we are across uh, 13 time zones. That's unbelievable. And the program will last until late tonight here in Germany and evening to Latin America. There has been a great, uh, put together a great program. This is only possible through uh, our partners. And here you see who uh, jointly uh, together with us, uh, joined us and put together uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this program. I would like to thank everybody for uh, helping us and for contributing to this. It's more than 30 partners uh, from different parts. Last but not least, I would like to thank uh, the Federal Ministry for the Environment for their uh, generous support and uh, to bring them, uh, bring us really together and enable us to have another Transport Week even during the pandemic. And I would like to encourage you to participate actively, go to the polls, uh, look in the chat, uh, contribute, discuss with your colleagues, uh, contribute to the wall of ideas. Uh, I think this can be really make a difference uh, to any event here. We'll have a nice program now in the remaining uh, a few hours. And uh, so in that program, we first go around the world and look in the different countries uh, in a world cafe. Then we have another um, keynote uh, speech on freight today. And later, we'll uh, launch a new inspiring publication, a comic on how to transform transport. Uh, and uh, then we close with an inspiring debate. Uh, oops, <laughs> with an inspiring debate on uh, different uh, ideas on digitalization and teams, two teams battle against each other. Thank you. What an outlook. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, you are very much welcome to join us in the chat with your ideas. And as Daniel Bonga just mentioned, use also the wall of ideas, you know, for your thoughts, for your statements, for your ideas that are going to end up also in our or on our big, big, big map of the graphic recording. That's why I wave now and hand over to Anne. Anne, I see you. Oh, what a wonderful map. <laughs> Thanks for joining us uh, at this very special week, five days, but already your map and your piece of art is absolutely getting filled with a lot of different perspectives, with a lot of different ideas that are already discussed, but also, of course, that will be discussed. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Mexico, Ecuador, Peru, Paraguay, we're going to head into this region in a moment. And if you miss something on, our, on this wall, use the wall of ideas, of course, on the event platform to, you know, to tell us what is actually your statement, what are your thoughts, and we're going to gather that and, of course, hand over that to Anne, our graphic recorder. So thanks again, Anne. I switch to you on a later stage again, so see you later.
And of course, we are, as Daniel Bongard just mentioned and pointed out, we are traveling now a little bit, although it's only virtual, but nevertheless, we're going to travel. And I take you with us on a very interesting journey. It is a world cafe around, around the globe. And of course, we'd like to tackle and to hear more about the hot topics when we debate about transport and mobility in different contexts and in different countries. And of course, how uh, the countries are actually tackling the COVID-19 impact when we debate and talk about transport and mobility. And I warmly welcome now for this first round of gathering and of an outlook, colleagues from Uruguay, Ecuador, and Colombia. And looking into Uruguay, I warmly welcome now Antonella Tambasco, National Direct of Energy, Ministry of Industry, Energy and Mining, Uruguay. And we do have uh, from Ecuador, Fabian Uxategui, Subsecretary of Land and Rail Transportation, Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure of Ecuador. And last but not least, from Colombia, Paola Arbel Aes Arenas, Institute for Financing, Promotion and Development of the City of Ibagué. So what is the hot topic in transport and mobility in your country? And how do you tackle uh, the impact of COVID in your country? Can you give us a little bit of a glimpse um, what is actually on your working desk right now. And I'd like to start with Antonella. Bueno, buenos días y buenas tardes eh, para todas partes de, del mundo. En, en Uruguay, el, la movilidad en particular y, y el transporte, obviamente, como en todas partes de, del mundo, se, se vio afectado por, por el tema de de la pandemia, pero también es, es un, un desafío que, que puede traer consecuencias que, que contribuyan a una movilidad más sostenible. Eh, Uruguay ha trabajado en temas que tienen que ver con, con IMPROVE, obviamente, con, con, con el último punto de, de, la, de las políticas de movilidad, pero, pero entendemos que, que estos nuevos desafíos implican un cambio cultural en entender a la sociedad de que los modos activos y tanto la bicicleta como las caminatas también pueden contribuir en este contexto. Se, se ha visto un desarrollo de, de estas áreas de movilidad activa y bueno y el desafío está en, en, en cómo volver a, a, a la confianza a lo que tiene que ver con el transporte público. ¿no? Thank you very much, Antonella. And we do have, of course, a translation. So thanks again for joining us. Just um, as a reassurance, how do you tackle the COVID-19 impact? Can you repeat that for us in a second? Ah, sorry, I, I don't know that the translation is not working. I, I, I start in Spanish again. So, eh, nosotros estamos trabajando en, so, obviamente, en, en tratar de volver a, a contar con la confianza para el transporte público, que es el más afectado en, en el uso de los modos sostenibles por el COVID. Pero también lo vemos como, como un desafío y como una oportunidad lo que tiene que ver con la movilidad activa, con, con, con volver a, a la bicicleta y a la caminata también como, como opción para, para movernos por las ciudades de nuestro país. Entonces estamos trabajando en distintos planes y se han hecho algunos pilotos también de promoción de, de los sistemas más eficientes. Thank you, Antonella. And of course, walking and using the bicycle was already a highly debated uh, topic this morning. I'd like to head over to Colombia, to Paola Arbel Aes Arenas. Maybe you can give us also a glimpse from your perspectives. What is a hot topic right now when we have to debate about transport and mobility in your country and also focusing on the actual movement and the actual pandemic? How do you tackle the COVID impact on transport and mobility? Buenos días para todos. Eh, 
en atención al transporte y a la movilidad del país. En este momento eso hace, son temas que hacen parte de la agenda de los mandatarios, eh, temas trascendentales y desde luego también con todo la, el impacto que ha generado eh, la pandemia eh, en nuestra ciudad y en nuestro país. Eh, actualmente estamos desarrollando ya unos sistemas de transporte masivo que incluyen eh, eh, transportes alternativos, eh, transportes, eh, el, eh, buses eléctricos, pero adicionalmente también en la ciudad, particularmente en Ibagué, que es donde nosotros nos encontramos, eh, estamos implementando un sistema de, trans, eh, de bicicletas de uso compartido en un convenio de cooperación que se hizo con con GIZ, donde vamos a instalar en la ciudad ocho estaciones y 89 bicicletas que se pondrán al uso de los ciudadanos, con el cual también pretendemos fomentar el uso del sistema, eh, de este sistema de transporte alternativo, eh, que va también a facilitar, teniendo en cuenta que es una ciudad pequeña con unas distancias que no son tan largas, eh, que también la población joven, el adulto mayor, quieran hacer uso de estos sistemas y se beneficien desde luego para toda la ciudad. Eh, son parte de la estrategia de los mandatarios locales, eh, un apoyo que está haciendo el Instituto de Financiamiento, Promoción y Desarrollo, Infibagué, y eso es en lo que estamos trabajando y que también va a contribuir a ese impacto que ha generado el COVID en nuestra ciudad y a los sistemas de transporte. Thank you so much, and of course, thanks to the interpreters for actually making understandable what you were just saying, dear Antonella and Paola. So thanks again for joining us for this conference week, and greetings goes out. They go out to Uruguay and uh, Colombia. Have a beautiful rest of the day, and I hope to stay, that you stay with us on the conference and that we see each other again. Thank you very much for that first round, and all the best for you. We are coming back to our second round of the Global Cafe. So, of course, I stick with the question, what is really a hot topic in transport and mobility in your country? And the next countries presented are coming from Peru, Chile, uh, and we do have Ismael Suta with us from Peru, Director of Promovilidad, Minister of Transportation and Communication. A warm welcome goes, of course, to you and buenos dias. And we do have from Chile, Giselle Labarte, Executive Secretary, Roads and Urban Transportation Program of the Chilean Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications, and Maria Belen Fernandez, a Fernandez Advisor to the Minister's Office, Ministry of Transport and Telecommunications, Chile, Project Partner, Moving Chile. A long title, but we do have to discuss a, a lot. So thanks again, of course, for joining us. Buenos dias. A good morning to you, and greetings from Berlin to Peru and Chile. So when I ask you about the hot topics uh, concerning transport and mobility, what is also concerning the trend of digitalization on your working desk? What is your priority? And I'd like to start with uh, the colleague from Peru. Gracias, muy buenos días. Primero, agradecerles por esta posibilidad de poder llegar a, a ustedes y segundo manifestarles que uno de los temas candentes en transporte y movilidad sin duda es el alto grado de informalidad es un punto muy relevante en el país porque no solo afecta a la racionalización de las rutas de transporte sino también contribuye a la congestión en las ciudades ante ello Actualmente venimos realizando acciones de fiscalización para poder combatirlas. Sin embargo, queda pendiente la implementación de políticas que permitan el incentivo de las empresas informales, quienes por lo general cuentan con flotas antiguas y en mal estado. Por ello, desde el sector, a fin de in incentivar el retiro de esta flota y promover la formalización, se ha aprobado el Decreto Supremo 05 del año 2021 que aprueba el Reglamento Nacional para el Fomento de Chatarreo. Eh, sistemas formales, sistemas masivos, sistemas integrados de transporte solo tenemos en la capital. Eh, actualmente el transporte se moviliza, eh, moviliza el 87% de la población, pero ese transporte formal solo moviliza el 25%. En ese sentido, lo que queremos es promover más sistemas integrados de transporte en otras ciudades. Y ese es el rol que tiene 
promovilidad. Por otro lado, en materia de movilidad urbana, la promoción del transporte no motorizado, eh, como la bicicleta, durante este tema de pandemia ha servido para promover e interconectar algunas redes de ciclovías que eh, todavía este, no tenían continuidad. Es por eso que a través de promovilidad del Programa Nacional de Transporte Público hemos brindado asistencia técnica a 25 municipalidades del interior del país y hemos transferido recursos por más de 23 millones de soles que nos va a servir para implementar en los siguientes meses 400 kilómetros de ciclovía. Con ello esperamos incrementar la demanda del uso de la ciclovía, la demanda de, de los ciclistas y también nos va a servir para eh, que podamos eh, evitar que el transporte público sea un vector de contagio del coronavirus. Respecto al tema de la tendencia a la digitalización, eh, venimos trabajando con un proyecto piloto en Piura que es una estimación de demanda a través de eh, un proyecto de Big Data. Eh, queremos tecnificar todo el sistema de transporte y toda, todos los procesos administrativos en sí. Estamos promoviendo en este momento en el ministerio la, la emisión de las eh, licencias de conducir electrónicas digitales, asimismo eh, el, las tarjetas únicas de circulación para que los, eh, los vehículos del transporte público de ámbito nacional puedan optar a este modo de, de, de identificación y dentro del mismo ministerio trabajando en un programa de cero papel, es decir, venimos avanzando y tecnificando todo el sistema de transporte de efectos de que sea cada vez mucho más eficiente. Muchas gracias, Ismael, from Peru. Thank you for joining us. And of course, thank you for outlining your priorities when we talk about the hot topics in transport and mobility. Last but not least, in this uh, second round, I'd like to welcome, of course, Giselle Labat. And greetings go out to Chile. Buenos dias. And I hope you are well wherever you are joining us today. It's great to have you on board. Thanks for joining us on the conference. So tell me a little bit about the hot topics concerning your work when we talk about about transport and mobility, and of course, when we talk about solutions within the trend of digitalization. What would you like to tackle on? Thank you very much. Uh, there are several hot topics, mainly uh, originated from three crises that our country has faced for some time now, and that have an impact on mobility. A social crisis, decisions regarding the configuration of territories and investment projects must be oriented toward reducing inequality gaps in greater or lesser times of travel. The climate crisis imposes important challenge on us in relation to reducing the emission of greenhouse gases, mitigation and adaptation to climate change force us to adopt an approach based on sustainable mobility. The NDCs establish goals that are relevant to the transportation sector, responsible for approximately a quarter of total emission in the country. And finally, the health crisis caused by the COVID virus, generating an impact on, on, on the way we carry out our activities, affecting pattern of travels And therefore, we have a challenge to be able to anticipate these new behaviors to make the best decisions regarding of mobility. And uh, what are solutions from uh, Chile in regards to the trend of di digitalization? There is a great dynamism in the development of new technologies, which permanently produces, produce change in each of the dimensions of mobility. The new technology of engines, the development of applications, the modernization of all form of mobility, such as scooters, all have an impact on the movement pattern of people and also of goods. Thus, we have seen the increase and consolidation of online shopping at different scales. And the efficient use of these solutions has 
and will have an impact of on sustainability. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Giselle, and greetings, of course, uh, to Chile. Thank you, both of you, for joining us. Muchas gracias, and have a beautiful day. All right, all the best for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are heading into our next session, the third round, and of course, the hot topics will still stay with us. We do have guests from Mexico, from Brazil, and from Ecuador now, and I'd like to start with our guest from Mexico. We do have Javier Garduno. He's the head of Division for Planning and Institutional Development at the Ministry of Agrarian, Territorial, and Urban Development. Javier, buenos dias. Nice to see you. I just wanted to check if you can hear me well. Please unmute yourself. Empecemos a discutir estos importantes temas que hoy nos tienen aquí juntos. El vínculo entre el transporte y el medio ambiente. En ese sentido, en ese sentido, sin embargo, es. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I just wanted to welcome you first, and then we're coming to you in a moment. Give me one more minute, please. But you are ready, so thank you for your passion. I just want to go on with the round and then I come back straight to you. Is that a deal? All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we do have Javier, and we do have from Brazil, Diego Pires Ferreira. Also a warm welcome to you. He's um, the, from Transport Planning Board, the Municipal Secretariat of Mobility and the Plan Mob Salvador uh, Advisor. And we do have from Ecuador now, Fabian Ustategue, right? Um, from, he's a Subsecretary of Land and Rail Transportation, a Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure of Ecuador. So I think we are now complete with that round and I'd like to start with our guest from Mexico, Javier. So now it's your turn. What are the hot topics when we talk about transport and mobility? And of course, a very big question, how do you tackle the climate crisis? Muchas gracias, muchas gracias y, y, y un placer estar en este foro. Importante que podamos discutir cuáles son los aspectos relacionados entre la política de transporte y su vínculo con el medio ambiente. Sin duda nos encontramos en una crisis, en una crisis medioambiental y atacar el tema desde el sector transporte es fundamental. En México, ¿cuál es el tema candente? El tema candente es cómo logramos que la visión que hemos logrado dentro de nuestra máximo orden jurídico, que es la Constitución, se vea reflejado en la implementación. Y esto ha sido un camino fantástico. Fue durante la pandemia que tuvimos todas las condiciones para llegar a esa cúspide. Estamos realmente en la cúspide de la montaña porque logramos que la movilidad con enfoque de sostenibilidad se reconozca hoy en día en nuestro país como un derecho colectivo. Y ese derecho colectivo se tiene que implementar en acciones concretas cuya responsabilidad es de los gobiernos locales, las entidades federativas y los municipios. Y la implementación en cascada de esa visión que hemos logrado articular, de esta visión ambiental y territorial de la movilidad y el transporte es fundamental. Y para ello, ¿qué estamos haciendo? Estamos desplegando una serie de estrategias. Primero, esa visión concretada a través de la estrategia Movilidad 4S, una movilidad solidaria, sostenible, segura y sustentable, que permita entender la movilidad con su vínculo no solamente con el transporte, sino su vínculo con la seguridad vial. Y a partir de ahí, ir desplegando una serie de herramientas, guías, metodologías, mecanismos de implementación que permitan que esta visión que hemos consagrado en la Constitución se vea reflejado en proyectos. Y lo hemos venido haciendo también de la mano de estrategias muy importantes para nosotros y de aliados estratégicos como es la GIZ, que nos ha permitido llevar esa implementación hacia los gobiernos locales. Hoy en día tenemos ya varios proyectos pilotos que a partir de esta visión conjunta que hemos logrado articular en la Constitución se están desprendiendo en proyectos específicos que tienen esa intención, que el regreso a la nueva normalidad se dé bajo condiciones que permitan evitar el uso del vehículo privado, generar condiciones para que los modos de transporte sostenibles y activos estén presentes en todas nuestras ciudades. Y es ahí en donde estamos generando mucho valor 
porque si bien la implementación se da desde lo local, nuestra visión la hemos empezado a articular con estas herramientas y estas guías metodológicas que permiten su implementación a nivel local. ¿Qué sigue a futuro? A futuro sigue una nueva reforma también jurídica para que esa constitución se vea reflejada en una nueva ley general de movilidad y seguridad vial bajo el enfoque de sostenibilidad y resiliencia y que eso sea un nuevo elemento que permita una mayor coordinación para el despliegue de presupuestos, de instrumentos de planeación y sobre todo de uso de datos y de información digital para seguir transformando nuestras ciudades. La apuesta es muy clara. Esa visión que hemos consagrado en la Constitución y que vemos hoy reflejado en una nueva ley general, se tiene que ver reflejada también en esos mecanismos de implementación a nivel local, con guías, metodologías, para como dicen los Objetivos de Desarrollo Sostenible y también nuestro Plan Nacional de Desarrollo, no dejar a nadie fuera y no dejar a nadie atrás un mandato que tomamos con toda la seriedad en nuestro país. Muchísimas gracias y contentísimos de participar en este interesante debate y discusión. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Javier, for joining us and, of course, for underlining the togetherness, although we are heading into a new normal and, of course, for bringing in of also the local context and the local perspective in our debate. Thank you so much. Greetings goes out, go out to Mexico. And now we are heading to Brazil. Diego, how would you answer my question? What are hot topics in transport and mobility? And of course, how do you tackle the climate crisis? Well, uh, hot topics, I would say that, uh, as Javier just mentioned, there are many things in common, but the main challenge, I would say, that is how to finance public transport. And it, this is leading us to a zero emission transition. Uh, let me explain this a little bit. For several years in Brazil, uh, the ticket avenue financed at all costs of public transport. This is common in many Latin American cities, but not very common in the worldwide. So most of Brazilian cities need the ticket avenue, the, the passengers paying for, for keep the whole system. But suddenly, however, years ago, we start to perceive a significant loss of passengers. This scenario created a loop where fewer passengers provide fewer resources. So with fewer resources, you fail to maintain the quality and attractiveness of public transport, and you keep losing the passengers in this loop. So uh, in 2020, we, we had the pandemic and knocked out this model, highlighting all the fragilities that we have and urging for evaluating alternatives. So the bright side of this is that we start questioning all of this model that is based on diesel, on, on, on fossil fuels, uh, uh, vehicles uh, in, in all Brazilian cities. And we are now studying how to deploy zero emissions buses. And, and, and this could be also a solution to tackle the climate crisis. Well, uh, besides this, I could mention uh, uh, several, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, forward movements that we have been facing. I, I can give you the example of the city of Salvador, the way I'm working with. Uh, we had uh, 40 kilometers of bicycle lanes, and now we have 300 kilometers. And we had already also on the horizon uh, 80, 80 kilometers more for this, this year. So we, we you can see already the, the, the bicycle taking up the, the daily routine of people. We are planting more trees to give more comfortable for pedestrians to walk in the city. So these are, are, I mean, so let's say, uh, combined uh, with the road safety and all this, uh, this is like the whole topic and in a broader view. Uh, but yeah, the main challenge would be this, and how can we lead to a zero transition as also transport as is uh, uh, responsible for the, the big slice of emissions in cities, at least in Brazilian cities. So uh, this would be uh, uh, the broader view of the thing. Thank you so much. Muito obrigado, Diego. And I love your backdrop. It's so unusual to see so many people in a subway, right, <laughs> without wearing a mask. So thanks again for remembering the good old times, so to say. And maybe when we look ahead, there will be changing times, of course. So thanks again, of course, for joining us. Muito obrigado. And uh, now heading into Ecuador, our colleague Fabian is also with us. Fabian, so talking about hot topics, what would you like to add from your perspective when we have to talk talk about and debate about hot topics in transport and mobility from your side, from your context, from the Ecuadorian perspective? And of course, what are solutions when we talk about the trend of digitalization? Fabian.
Eh, sí, buenos días con todos. Muchas gracias por la invitación. Eh, bueno, eh, en contestación a la pregunta, yo veo que el problema básicamente es un problema transversal tanto eh, en los países en los que les he estado escuchando. Básicamente tenemos problemas de eh, adaptarnos y mejorar las condiciones para el medio ambiente. Eso vamos a lograr a través de una digitalización de los transportes. En Ecuador, básicamente... Nuestro gran problema es la calidad de los servicios de transporte público. Esto debido a que nuestra ley orgánica propia nos uh, entrega competencias a los distintos gobiernos seccionales, no al gobierno central como tal. Entonces tenemos varias eh, políticas de transporte dependiendo de cada gobierno. Esto tenemos que terminarlo y hacerlo de una forma eh, total y única a nivel de país. Eh, por el momento, por el asunto de la pandemia, por ejemplo, nosotros estamos con aforos que fueron desde el 50% al inicio, ahora estamos en un 75%. Esto eh, repercute en eh, el negocio, digamos, del transporte y no les es eh, muy muy, digamos, eh, muy, eh, ¿cómo podríamos decir?, beneficiados, eh, no quedan muy beneficiados los transportistas y esto nos ha dado muchos problemas en ese, en ese sentido. Vamos a, a dar pasos hacia adelante con las nuevas políticas del gobierno eh, que recién el 24 de mayo asumió el poder, eh, y vamos a tener las políticas necesarias para poder ir adelante en una modernización del transporte, tanto a nivel de las ciudades, como les decía, o prefecturas, como a nivel nacional. Eh, eso es lo que les podría decir eh, de la cuestión candente en Ecuador. Thank you very much to all of you, and of course, Fabian, uh, for joining us from Ecuador. Thank you to Javier for joining us from Mexico, and thanks to Diego for joining us from Brazil. It's been a pleasure to have you on board, La uh, gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, but more gentlemen now in this round. But of course, you were the third round, so thanks again. Uh, muchas gracias, and I hope to see you soon, although, of course, we don't see each other face to face, but I guess it's going to be the best option to share some moments virtually. So join us in our debates. Thanks again, gentlemen, and thanks for joining us. On a side note, of course, dear audience, uh, I do appreciate when you are really engaged and I love to read from you with the hashtag Transport Week 21 and of course Change Transport. And the countries we've just listened to are actively engaged. There are more uh, countries that are actively engaged in the current debates. But um, this was just a glimpse, of course, showing you the hot topics of some parts of the area. Thanks, everybody. Let's take a look, at, uh, of course, again to Anne, our graphic recorder. And let's have a look on our very special uh, world map. In case you missed something, you know, feel free to post your ideas, your thoughts on the wall of ideas. This is why we are here for, this is why we are gathering online in a virtual platform. I know, and you probably know as well, we would have loved to have you on board face-to-face, uh, -face, but this is, I think, the best option we can handle right now. So looking into a Latin American perspective now in the afternoon of uh, the European time zone, but of course in the morning session now when we head over to Latin America, it's a pleasure to stay connected within different hubs in Asia, as we've discussed early this morning, in Eastern Europe, Latin America now. Of course, we are also debating in Africa and live streaming from here, from the Global Hub Berlin, bringing together experts decision makers from all over the world and looking into the changing of the transport for the better as transport comprises roughly 23% of the global energy related carbon dioxide emissions. 
And without direct intervention, transport share of energy-related CO2 emissions could reach 40% by 2030. So we need to discuss really how to cut down these emissions, but of course, how to uh, be actively engaged within the green recovery in a post-COVID world when we want to shape transport, but also mobility. The map that you can just see now from our cameras, this is the graphic recording by Anne, really focusing on a gathering or of bringing together what we were discussing and debating in the morning and what we will discuss in the afternoon as we do have some hours ahead of us. You will see it's constantly yeah, included with some new post-its, that's for sure, but um, we would love to hear from you on the platform what is missing from your side. Thanks, of course, again to everybody who makes this conference possible. It's been a lot of work ahead. More than 30 partner organizations are engaged and we are Yes, in 13 different time zones right now, live broadcasting. This is a big effort and a big success for this transport and climate change week. More than 60 sessions are ahead of us within the next and upcoming days. So this is really just the kickoff of a beautiful week of very in-depth and inspirational keynotes and talks with more than 200 speakers. And this is the beauty of digital live events. We can actually come together from everybody, from every corner of the world uh, within a moment, within a glimpse and debate with each other instead of just about each other without actually having long, long distance travels. But of course, we do miss you face to face. Ladies and gentlemen, this was just a glimpse looking into our graphic recording and of course inviting you very kindly to be engaged also in the chat. Let us know what you think about the conference and of course what your questions are. Thank <laughs> you.